So hello everyone and welcome back to this uh, series of videos looking at models where I've either finished building a model from a kit or where I've designed a, a kit or a model. And today we're looking at another tiny little um, 009 uh, wagon. So um, that's 4mm uh, to the foot scale running on 9mm gauge track. Um, this is a, a model I designed. Um, it's not really a kit as such because there's very little in the way of things to put together. Um, but it's an odd little thing and I wanted to talk about it partly for the fact that this is the model that uh, first got me um, involved in writing articles for uh, railway magazines as well. Um, so I'll give a little bit of history as well as discussing the um, the kit. So what we're looking at, well as you can see it's a, it's a strange little thing because it's only got three, three sides. Um, it's referred to as a breaker wagon, uh, used at the Trevor Granite Quarry. Uh, and the idea being that when the, the granite was kind of being uh, quarried out, it would probably be loaded kind of manually by hand, big chunks, into the wagons from the side, um, go down the railway, and then at some point the whole thing would be in a tippler. So that's where the whole wagon essentially is rotated uh, to empty it out. And... Um, yeah, there's not much to, to say really. It's a 3D printed uh, body. Uh, the wheels just again clip into the into the axle boxes which are kind of printed in. Um, the interesting things about it uh, from a point of view of the model itself is that there are a couple of details that were kind of too fine uh, to print so they're done in a, in a slightly different way. So one is this metal um, edge across the back here. Um, it's painted to match the rest of the kind of printed uh, parts, but it's actually a piece of paper um, just cut out and folded um, across the top. So it's folded in this kind of a U-shaped channel and then glued onto the back. The reason for that was I wanted to ensure that I could print the wagons kind of this way up. Uh, we've talked in the past about the way the, uh, the detail can get damaged if you have... Um, the support material touching the, the, the faces where the details are. Um, so what I did on this was if I printed it this way up, then um, all these plank details on the end would be, the gaps would be nice and detailed because there would be little in the way of support material required um, because there's no overhangs uh, this way up. But obviously if I'd put a lip on the back here, then there would have been an overhang, however slight, and that may well have resulted in support material all the way up this side, and the same on the inside as well, which again would have ruined the, the effect. So I printed it without um, without the strip, and as I say, that's then just a little bit of paper uh, glued on, uh, which works works well. You'd never you'd never really know looking at it. And then the other things are these. There's these tiny little kind of metal supports at the side here. Um, they're, again, they're very thin and they're a bit difficult to see. So these are actually um, brass. <clears throat> so they're, I, I drew them out on the computer and then printed out the template, put it, stuck it to a piece of brass sheet and cut them out. So there's one on either side. Um, again, the problem here was that they were, they're too thin and too fine to print. They would, they would either never pass the, the tests uh, that Shapeways, uh, which is how I got these printed, uh, run. Um, you can see they're, they're just very very thin metal they always disappear when you look at it in the right angle um, and even if they had printed they would have been so fragile they would have broken off um, so yeah so these are just stuck on with then some uh, rivet transfers to give the, the rivet detail um, and yeah it turns out into a nice into a nice little model now um, I came across the drawings for this um, and a fellow modeler um, Ian Robinson who um, fantastic modeler um, hasn't done much modeling in the last well quite a few years now I think he got to the point where he was doing it as um, as a job uh, and kind of got fed up with doing it as a job and, and, and not enjoying it for himself so gave up I believe he now gives um, tours of, of, of Welsh quarries and mines and things um, unfortunately without kind of the modeling um, aspect I've kind of lost track of lost touch a little uh, but he introduced me to the drawings for this because um, at the time I'd been doing um, just a few little wagons um, out of books I had. And he pointed out that uh, there was a, a free issue uh, of a magazine online that had the drawings for this in it. Now that magazine happened to be Narrow Gauge and Industrial Railway Modelling Review. 
um, quite a handful most people refer to it just as the review um, so yeah so I downloaded the the free sample version that was available on the on the website at the time um, and yeah it was it, it was it was kind of a revelation I'd, I'd been used to seeing railway magazines that were kind of you know the reviews of the latest thing from Hornby or Backman or whatever um, or descriptions of people's layouts which were usually you know massive lifelong affairs that I had no way of, of replicating whereas the review was specifically looking at kind of narrow gauge um, and industrial uh, prototypes um, and was a mixture of articles discussing the the real locos wagons um, railways uh, and, and very um, high quality uh, modeling uh, and a lot of the the modeling was either of just individual items like this or of layouts that were much more kind of uh, small and self-contained um, so they're more kind of um, not quite working dioramas because that suggests something really small but layouts that you could kind of envisage having the space and size to build yourself um, and as I said the, the combination of all those things was kind of a revelation um, so not only um, did I find the drawings for this but I subscribed uh, and I went and collected eventually over a number of years all the back issues um, and yeah the the, the modeling and the drawings and things are, are, are superb if you want if you want to lose yourself for weeks uh, in the in the archive um, go have a look at some of the some of the issues buy a few issues you can usually pick pick them up on eBay or, or the the website which I'll put in the link in the description uh, sells back issues um, but having having built this wagon um, and read through a few back issues I realized that there'd been very little in the way of um, discussion of 3d printing as a means of modeling in the magazine uh, there been a couple of there been a couple of issues um, one um, looking at uh, 3d printing a sip hat locomotive I believe um, again I'll try and I'll, if I can find the exact details I'll, I'll stick a link in the in the description but um, but yeah no, nothing that had been particularly talking about the process of how you might go about doing 3d modeling for yourself so having having built this what I did was I wrote an article basically discussing the the approach I use to 3D modeling and how I how I work. So, um, talking about how most of this, in fact, pretty much all of this wagon, bearing the, the, the details added by hand, is built up from um, a couple of simple primitives. So, um, sphere, um, cylinder, cube, um, and then just the way they're added together and the and 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 sized in the 3D software um, gives this. Uh, and I wrote a, I wrote a nice article. I think. It, Ran to about four pages in total, describing how I how I modelled this and, and and talked about how I painted it, um, and that was published in uh, in Navigation Industrial Railway Modelling Review, um, and went out really well. There was there was lots of nice comments about how it was a you know a nice reasonable introduction to how people might go about doing the the three D printing themselves. I mean, this was well before um, well before lots of the kind of resin home three D printers, and well before um, shapeways were flooded with uh, with 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 lots and lots of railway uh, railway models, so yeah, that was quite quite something different, and um, and obviously since then I've done a lot more a lot more writing uh, for numerous magazines. So again, lots lots more articles for the review, written for Garden Railway, uh, well Garden Rail magazine, um, written for some society journals, so the O Nine Society and the Industrial Rail Industrial Railway Society. Um, yeah, and so uh, it was. It was the start of a, a process, and and you know, looking back at this model, it still it still holds up. It's still um, it's still pretty good. I, I I still like it. It still it still works really well, and I don't think I'd change much. Obviously, now I probably I could possibly get away with three D printing this on my own printer, uh, and with the way that works, I could probably print this piece at least uh, without needing to do the paper aspect. Although these thin parts may still. Um, May still benefit from being uh, being brass, but there you go. So that's uh, another another model I've designed. Um, you can still buy these from Shapeways. Uh, again, I'll put a, a link in the description. Um, I also produced a, a PDF instruction sheet for kind of how to assemble it, which includes the templates for the brass and paper parts. Um, so if you want to go have a go at building one of these yourself, uh, feel free to uh, have a look on Shapeways. This is the 
this is the kind of thing you'll get. Uh, this is obviously a very old print that didn't get washed. Um, so it's aged a bit yellow. It's a bit, it's it's sticky with the wax still. Uh, but you can see it's um, in comparison a bit difficult on the light. But you can see it's not got the, the strip across the top, no paper. Uh, and if we look at the openings, uh, nothing on the edges uh, where this one has the, the brass piece. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, you know, transferred from this to this. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, hope you've uh, enjoyed that. As I say, not a particularly um, complicated or, or detailed model, but it was how I uh, I got my start writing uh, and talking about, about models. So from that point of view, um, I thought it was worth sharing. Thanks for watching.